guys very much. Welcome back to next week with Jeff Durbin, guys. I'm Jeff Durbin. Lots of things happening in the world. You guys ready to hear about it? Yeah. Good. Here we go. Boston University discovered a time capsule from 1915. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Looks like the digging club finally gets their recognition, guys. <laughs> Uh, when they did open up the relic, uh, the Boston school was surprised to find nothing but a voice recording that said, Park the car in the Harvard Yard. Uh, we're wicked smart here. Uh, Amazon launched an African-American streaming service. They did. You'll see it in the Amazon Prime list, but uh, it's in the back of the streaming service. <laughs> That's what they did. A banana peel hanging on a tree offended students of Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, because they thought it was a racial slur. This now marks the seventh misdemeanor by Donkey Kong. <laughs> Hawaii is so afraid of robots taking their jobs that they're planning on moving to a universal basic income. This is where everybody gets paid no matter what you do, uh, which would of course destroy their economy uh, and it goes to show the old saying, in case of Skynet, destroy humanity first. <laughs> right? Robots can't destroy us if we're already dead. A murder suspect used Lyft. You like Lyft? Yeah? They used Lyft to move a dead body 100 miles. It's true. The driver could have reported him sooner, but he really wanted those five stars. <laughs> Yesterday, Hillary Clinton promoted her new media platform. Did you see this? No, you didn't, okay. Uh, nobody cares. Uh, it's, uh, it's not too popular yet. Uh, she's hoping that WikiLeaks will share it for her. I'm sure that by now, you guys have heard about the devastation uh, with the, Car the Caribbean. Caribbean, okay, whatever, okay. I'm not talking about Hurricane Irma yet, because uh, that hasn't hit yet. Uh, I'm talking about Pirates of the Caribbean 5. It was terrible. It was a disaster. Mexico has graciously been sending help and resources to Houston in a devastation. So we're all grateful, right? Um, we can see this as a moment of unity. It's fantastic. Uh, Trump sees this as a 25% discount on paying for the wall. And finally, Trump picked an openly gay diplomat as ambassador to Germany. Or as CNN would put it, uh, Trump starts shipping gays out of the country. <laughs> That's it for now, guys. We'll be right back with the blend of the week and the rest of the show. Stay with us. Don't forget to like and share the episode. We'll see you right here. Stay with us. Thank you, guys. Apologia All Access is Apologia Church's opportunity to have a farther reach into the world with our proclamation of the gospel, our defense of the gospel, our engagement of the culture. And I pray, God, today that you would move in a mighty way, Lord God, to open the eyes and hearts of these people and draw them to your Son. So again, it's back to who do we believe, Jesus or Joseph? What it is is this. People who are fans of our ministry, who learn from our materials. They partner with us. They join together with Apologia Church. They donate $7.95 a month. And when they donate, they participate with us in ministry, making all of this possible. The studio, our reach into the world, our evangelism, our special television show, our videos, everything that we do to communicate the gospel around the world. We began to go across the island and we saw the cults everywhere. There's a real opportunity to bring the gospel in a powerful way here. Ultimately, our goal is to create television programming that glorifies Christ in its quality, but can also engage the culture in its conversation. If I'm a Christian, if I believe in my Lord Jesus Christ, it stays with me in all areas of my life. That means if I'm in business, if I'm in politics, it stays with me. I like you a lot. <laughs> With Apologia TV and After Show, we have guests like John Frame, Dr. James White, Ken Ham, and Denny Burke, with more guests added every week. And we discuss relevant news, information, and issues. We cover a wide breadth of topics, everything from abortion to apologetics to cults like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses to biblical theology and reformed theology. 
for new, predestined, justified, glorified links forged by God in this golden chain. So when you sign up for All Access, you get the weekly television show, the after show, you get Apologia Academy and all the advanced theological training, and you make all the additional content that we put out possible. There is evil and suffering in the world. So what? Nothing is ultimately evil in an atheistic worldview. So what? So the content we're able to, to put out to reach into the world with the gospel is made possible by you, our All Access partners. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody for joining us. Welcome back to next week. Are you guys ready? Yes? Yeah. It's time for the blend of the week. This week's blend of the week is Kim Java Un. It thinks it's the greatest coffee in the world and actually it's really dark. With a lot of daddy issues. This, what this one is here. All right, everybody. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Let's do this, everybody. Welcome to the desk, bees. Ah, gotta love that oon. Okay, today's theme is called U.S. federal laws. Actually, sorry, I didn't say that right. Let me say it, let me say it again. The, today's theme is called dumb and unnecessary laws. <laughs> when it comes to laws in this country, we tend to look at the president but our president is Trump, and he tends to look at himself. One thing we can all agree on about Donald Trump is that he loves himself. I'm very highly educated. I know words, I have the best words. I have the best people. I have the best courses in the world. Trump steaks are by far the best tasting, most flavorful beef you've ever had. It's the best of the best. Where has all the time gone? We're almost a full year into Donald Trump showing us what King Nebuchadnezzar would be like today. <laughs> you read the book of Daniel. Read it. And try not to imagine Trump every time Nebuchadnezzar comes into the story. I'm a magnificent king. I'm going to build the most beautiful statue you've ever seen in your life. And most of it's going to be gold plated. I'm also going to make people bow down to it, specifically three people. People, some people can't stand uh, Donald Trump as president. And one thing that's worth noting, however, is that just like us, he doesn't seem to be a fan of too many laws and regulations. In fact, Trump has already reversed 15 laws that Obama put into place. I guess the phrase, once you go black, you never go back, only applies if you're not president. <laughs> and you have seen what's happening with regulations. They're going fast. We need regulations, but many of them are unnecessary. Look, we need unnecessary regulations to go away. Uh, you don't have to listen to the angry orange to know that there are too many unnecessary regulations. There's an insane amount of laws in this country. In fact, there are about 20,000 laws just governing the use and ownership of guns. Man, oh, if we only had a Second Amendment, if that only existed, right? We wouldn't need any of those laws, right? That's too bad. I mean, there are so many federal laws that on average, we unintentionally break about three of them every single day. It's just like the old saying, three dumb laws a day help free medical keep the doctors with decent health care away. <laughs> it does. There are so many laws, we don't even know half of them. And yet today, secular America says that they don't want to serve God because he just has too many rules. However, the Old Testament, it is estimated, only has a little over 600 laws. And a good chunk of them are only about skin conditions. <laughs> but in this country, we've fallen so far away from God, and we don't display wisdom or intelligence. I mean, we display a love for control. I mean, that's in our identity, right? For instance, it is illegal, this is the truth, it's illegal to go whale hunting in Nebraska. <laughs> Just think about that one, guys. And to help you process that, let's go to a map of the U.S. Let's go to that map. Okay, now Nebraska is close to the ocean, right? And so that makes sense that there would be whale hunting prohibited. Actually, that's New York City. Here's Nebraska. 
right there on the coastline. There it is, right? And I'm sure there's plenty of whale sightings and whale hunting there. No, wait, that's Oregon. <laughs> Surely Nebraska's got, Nebraska's got to be near some water, right? No, that's North Korea. <laughs> but it does have whales, only in North Korea, they hunt us. <laughs> Now, okay, here's a real picture of where Nebraska is. This is really Nebraska. And as you can see, it's completely landlocked. And yet, Nebraska has a no whale hunting law. There aren't any whales in Nebraska. I looked it up and they don't even have whales in a zoo, which means the closest they get to seeing whales is in the water when there's a sad lady in a swim dress. When there are so many laws, and half of them are stupid, it makes sense as to why something like this would happen. Something like this. Payne says she was interfering with the investigation and that his commanding officer told him to make an arrest. Today, the Salt Lake City Police Chief says he apologized to Wubbles and that Detective Payne has been placed on paid administrative leave. Okay, look, you know there's a problem when somebody does know the law and they still get detained. All right, now this wouldn't have been okay even if the video came out looking like this. Yeah, still not okay, all right? The nurse did her job and even expressed the law. She told him what the law was, what the rules were, but they, she still got detained. And the only blonde that was supposed to get arrested this year was Hillary Clinton. Remember that? I do. Now, I think the reason this officer made unlawful decisions is because he's not actually a cop. He is clearly Professor Flitwick from Harry Potter. That's a fact. Amazing. <laughs> now, we hate authority when moments like this happen, but then we use authority if it works to our advantage, like how Joel Osteen did this week. There were safety issues. This building had flooded before, and so we were just being precautious. But the main thing is the city didn't ask us to become a shelter then. City never asked you to? Well, Joel, I don't know what's in your Cliff Notes version of the Bible, but Hebrew, Hebrews 13.2 did ask you to when it said, be sure to welcome into your home strangers. But maybe Joel Osteen was listening to his own advice here. I'm not saying you have to cut people off, never speak to them again. I am saying, you should put up some boundaries. You see, Houston, he didn't cut you off. He just put up some boundaries. <laughs> Probably the same ones he has with God. If we're relying on the government to tell us when to care for people, then we're missing the whole point of our independence, say, in 1776. I mean, we separated because they were abusing the power over us. They were enacting unjust laws. They were, they were uh, messing with our freedom of religion. And after we gained our independence and we declared it, we set up a government allowing each state the right to govern itself sovereignly with the federal government being sort of the manager, the glue that kind of holds things together. Boom, <laughs> educated. The federal government was not intended to force other states to do things against their will, which means that this is not a law. Good evening. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority in cases from Texas and Georgia said that the decision to end a pregnancy during the first three months belongs to the woman and her doctor, not the government. So the Supreme Court, who's not allowed to make laws, that's Congress's job, created a law making abortion legal in every state. Now listen, Supreme Court, this is not a wedding and you are not a mother-in-law. You can't tell us what to do. <laughs> I mean, if I'm wrong here, then Schoolhouse Rock lied to us, all of us. You mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. If the president vetoes me, I have to go back to Congress and they vote on me again, and by that time you're so By old, that time, know. it's very unlikely that you become a law. Notice how the Supreme Court wasn't in that song? I mean, come on, Supreme Court. If this nice bill has to go through this whole process, then abortion definitely has to. I mean, look at him. Look at him. If anyone's going to have an exception, it should be him. But he's just a bill, and he's just sitting there on Capitol Hill. Let me get this straight. Congress makes the bills, the president can veto or sign, and the Supreme Court can decide whether or not a law is unconstitutional. 
So Roe v. Wade was never a law. All they did was express an opinion. They didn't create a law. Courts can't make laws. Opinions are not the same as laws. Otherwise, I'd have canceled the view years ago. So here's where we're at. We obey laws that aren't laws and we ignore laws. Why? Because we don't have meaningful standards and we, don't, and we ignore God's standards, which is actually crazy because all the laws in the Bible promote self-government. In Deuteronomy 19.5, it says that if you go out with your neighbor to cut wood and the ax head flies off and kills your neighbor, you're not guilty of intentional murder. And the safety and responsibility is on the person using the ax not with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. <laughs> In closing, guys, here's a video of a cat. Yeah, that's what cat has came for. <gasps> that was amazing. That was amazing. And, and what does this cat video have to do with our country? Nothing. Just like Roe versus Wade. <laughs> The only difference is cats might give someone allergies, but they don't kill 50 million people. Now, I wanted to show just how ridiculous the law system is here in the United States. So I decided to point out a couple of ridiculous laws by breaking them here on the show. Right now. In Arkansas, it is illegal to mispronounce Arkansas. Come and get me, Arkansas. In New York, it is against the law to wear slippers after 10 p.m. And so, for those of you guys in New York right now, watching us live, it's after 10. Pay close attention. <laughs> Just me and my bunny slippers. Come and get me, New York. In Alabama, it's illegal to wear a fake mustache that causes laughter in a church. That's the truth. Now, we may not be in church, but I am a pastor. Now, if you want to come get me, you're going to have to get through this incredible mustache first. And this right here, this is my weapon. That's right, Alabama. I just use confetti, which is also illegal in your state. Come and get me, Alabama. In the state of Connecticut, if you drop a pickle and it doesn't bounce, it's legally not a pickle. <laughs> it didn't bounce, and I don't care what you say, Connecticut. That's still a pickle. And I refuse to say otherwise. Now, in fact, I am so mad I could spit. I could literally spit right now which is illegal somewhere in Arizona right now. So I will. <laughs> in Iowa, it's illegal to tell someone that you're giving them butter if it's really margarine. <laughs> Actually, this one makes sense. How dare you? How dare you? And lastly, in, ne in Nebraska, there's a law that you can't get married if you have a venereal disease. This is interesting. I think Nebraska just learned how to stop gay marriage. <laughs> Look it up, guys. It's the truth. Which, by the way, is not a national law. Because guess who decided to legalize gay mirage? The same people who decided on Roe v. Wade, which I am obviously against. And you got a problem with the Supreme Court? Feel free to come and get me. <laughs> That's all right now for next week. We will catch you on the other side. Stay with us, guys. Hey, Joy. Oh, what's up? Sorry, I couldn't hear you over the sound of tying my apron. I was just thinking we should talk about our new podcast, Sheologians. Okay. I'm ready. Sheologians is our new podcast where we talk about theology. Yeah, we wanted to make a micro podcast to help people think through the Christian worldview. The reason we wanted it to be a quick podcast is so that it would be accessible 
for women who are busy doing other important things, like knitting. Yeah, you can hear Sheologians every Friday morning by subscribing on iTunes. Or you can go to our website, sheologians.com, where you can learn to actively fight the powers of feminism. And bad theology. All while folding your laundry. Can I have a cupcake now? Welcome back, everybody. Thank you to the audience who's live here in the studios of next week. And thank you guys for all of you who are watching us live right now online. I want to encourage you to share and like this episode. We have a very important interview. We were given the opportunity to go to the state of Idaho last week, and we met with a man named Senator Dan Foreman. Now, Senator Foreman introduced a bill recently in Idaho uh, criminalizing abortion, uh, pointing to the laws that are already on the book that call abortion murder. He was essentially stopped by pro-life legislature and by the pro-life movement. And so we give to you right now, Senator Dan Foreman. Glad so, to be here. Absolutely. Let everybody know who you are and what you do in the state of Idaho. Okay. Well, I am a state senator, one of the 35 uh, state senators in Idaho. I'm from District 5, which is Laytaw County and Benoit County, which is kind of unique because it's a split district in the sense that Benoit County is extremely conservative and Laytaw tends to be not so conservative. All right. So it's kind of a mixed bag, which is fun. It's good. You get a cross-representation of all the different political types. I ran for sheriff here in 2016 and narrowly lost that. Uh, thought I was done with running for office and then was asked to run by the Republican Party in this district, uh, asked to run for Senate. And uh, I've had one session under my belt down in Boise. That was January, February, March of this year. And uh, that was an eye opener. Wasn't quite what I expected, but. Why, why is that? Well, <clears throat> I didn't expect the quality of the legislators to be as high and as good and as solid as it is. But on the other side of the coin, I was distressed by the fact that they're reluctant to stand up on key issues. Okay. Contentious issues uh, trouble them. Uh, and the only thing I can c conclude is, is uh, getting involved in contentious issues interferes with re-elections. Right. right. And I hate to say that because I know how nasty that sounds. But you know what? It's the truth. Mm -hmm. There's things they should stand up for and, and they don't. Okay. So let's, let's talk about that. Okay. What are one of those things that uh, they should stand up for they don't? It was a surprise to you. Well, uh, the centerpiece of my legislative efforts this first or past session was uh, I brought an anti-abortion bill. Mm -hmm. You can call it pro-life, anti-abortion, whatever. I wanted to <clears throat> eliminate from Idaho code the statements under the murder code and the aggravated battery code that says you won't be prosecuted in Idaho for having a legal abortion. Right. <clears throat> All of our code says abortion is murder. It's right here. It says it. Give me an example. Okay. Idaho state law. Yep, Idaho state law. Idaho code 18 4001, murder defined. Murder is the, and I'm taking portions of, of the code here. I'm not reading the entire sure. code, but this is the applicable section. Murder is the unlawful killing of a human being, including but not limited to a human embryo or fetus with malice aforethought. So it appears the intentional killing of a human embryo or fetus is murder under Idaho code. This is currently on the books? Yes. Uh, Idaho code 18-4003, degrees of murder. All murder which is perpetrated by any kind of willful, deliberate, and premeditated killing is murder of the first degree. Well, sounds like abortion would fit into that. Idaho code 18-907, aggravated battery. A person commits aggravated battery who, in committing battery upon the person of a pregnant female, causes great bodily harm, permanent disability, or permanent disfigurement to an embryo or fetus. Incredible. Uh, now it gets better. <clears throat> Idaho Code 18, <clears throat> excuse me, dash 601, titled Interpretation of State Statutes in the State Constitution. 
The Supreme Court of the United States having held in the case of Planned Parenthood versus Casey that the states have a profound interest in preserving the life of preborn children, Idaho hereby expresses the fundamental importance of that profound interest, and it is hereby declared to be the public policy of this state that all state statutes, rules, and constitutional provisions shall be interpreted to prefer by all legal means live childbirth over abortion. So abortion so, is illegal in Idaho, right? No abortions in Idaho. Yeah, it is, except we have Idaho Code 18-4016. And it basically says, for the purposes of this chapter, embryo or fetus shall mean any human being in utero. And it goes on to say, nothing in this chapter arising from the killing of an embryo or fetus shall be construed to permit the prosecution of any person for conducting an abortion, yada, yada, yada. So, Basically, it says it's murder. We don't like it. We stand against it. However, we're not going to prosecute you for having an abortion in Idaho. So <laughs> I wanted to change that last code, basically drop that code from, from the books and, and just go with uh, the other codes, which clearly define abortion as being murder. I couldn't get that bill into a hearing, into committee. Why? Just pro-life? Pro, pro no, it was the pro-choicers that were stopping you. Pro-choice. No, um, you know, I heard from pro-life and pro-choice, and, and that's good. I mean, they have a right to express their sure. opinions, but they don't really decide what gets into committee. Mm -hmm. The chairman of the committee decides in Idaho, okay. which is kind of a bottleneck in her system. But that's the and She was pro-choice, no, and so she killed he. it. Oh, he. Actually, he's, in my opinion, not pro-choice. I, I think he's a good Christian man. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, I think he would like to see abortion go away. So he's pro-life, technically. I think so. Okay. But he wasn't willing to let this go to committee unless I could convince him that the majority of the people on the committee, and there's nine people on it, um, were in favor of passing my bill or sending it to the Senate floor mm -hmm. for a vote. I couldn't get anybody on the committee. Because they were all pro-choice. No, I don't think so. I, th I think one or two were pro-choice. I think the rest would love to see this go away, this abortion issue. Right. Or not the issue, but make abortion uh, just across the board illegal in Idaho. They're politicians. And like I said earlier, re-election figures into it. Contentious issues are something to be avoided. So they don't always vote the way they wish they could vote. Mm -hmm. uh, political factors enter into it. I think they're all good people. And I think, like I said, the majority of them would like to see abortion be illegal in Idaho, but they're not willing to stand up and make the political leap. It's interesting, Senator, uh, in the last, say, two years, there's three states that I'm aware of, uh, Oklahoma, Idaho, and Texas, uh, that have had um, legislators uh, introduce, attempt to introduce bills uh, to criminalize abortion and to call it what it is. Um, and actually, in, like Idaho, uh, you have a state like Texas that actually has code on the books today current defining human life as from conception, that's a, and that's biologically a fact. It's, it can't be disputed. Uh, all the biological components of a human being at conception, it's part of our uh, species, if you want to use that terminology, at the moment of conception. And so a Texas bill points to that law and says it's already on the books that this is human life. We have to protect human life. We can't uh, kill a human life in, in an unjust manner uh, with malice of forethought. Um, and in all those instances, Senator, in Idaho with yours, in Oklahoma and in Texas, uh, all of these attempts have been killed, stopped by pro-life um, legislators and the pro-life movement, mm -hmm. which is concerning to me. And you have uh, states like mine, Senator, Arizona, where um, it's on the books today. 
Right. It's against the law today to kill a child in the womb in Arizona. It is, it's never been changed. It's never been altered. It's against the law. But it seems that we have all been, we've all bitten down into the uh, delusion that this Roe v. Wade is something that should actually affect the laws of the states. Mm -hmm. And we're all, I think, in a, in a way, bowing to this federal beast saying, okay, we'll, we'll do your bidding. And while that happens, we have uh, over 3,000 babies a day that die in the United States of America. I agree with your assertion that Roe v. Wade is not law, it's an interpretation, it's an opinion. Yeah. And the states cling to it as their reason for uh, not taking action on right. this issue. Right. Um, you know, you, you said that these initiatives have been shot down by the, the pro, pro-life people, and you're right. Uh, some of the pro-life people came to me at the state house and said, you need to stop what you're doing because you're destroying everything we've worked for. And I said, well, okay, what is it you're working for? Well, we want to get abortion stopped. Okay, um, how long have you been attempting to do this? Oh, we've been working for 25 years or whatever they told me. I said, well, you haven't done very well. Right. You're tolerating the evil, you're tolerating uh, the issue, you're, you, you're trying to accommodate it as part of American life and you're hiding behind Roe versus Wade. And if you're waiting for Roe versus Wade to change, let me ask you a question. How are you going to change Roe versus Wade? The end result of my initiative here would be to force this matter into the federal courts because yeah. it would go there lickety split. And then from there, hopefully, to the Supreme Court. Yeah. That's how you change Roe v. Wade. But by sitting back and saying, let's not push, let's just work gradually to get this. What does that mean? What are you doing? How are you going after Roe v. Wade? How are you stopping abortion? You're not. They have a niche, and this is going to sound cruel, but it's the absolute truth of the matter in my opinion. They have a niche. Mm -hmm. They have a function and they like their niche and they like their function and they, I'm not saying they're bad people, I'm sure they're good people and they think they're helping, but they're not helping to stop abortion. They're helping to perpetuate it and continue it because their niche is built up around the institution of abortion and when abortion goes away, their niche goes away and they go away. They have to away. close their doors. Yes. And I know how cruel that sounds, but You're I think it's the, the truth. truth. Senator. You are speaking yeah, it's, the truth. It, it's the truth. The way we will stop abortion is the same way it came to be quote unquote legal in America. We need to push this back into the courts, the federal courts, and that's going to take somebody bringing a bill forward and it's going to take an attorney general in a state somewhere with the backbone and the finances to fight this in state court and then fight it in federal court and push it on all the way up. There's a new Supreme Court in town. There's a new president. There's a new almost everybody and everything since these things came out of the Supreme Court back in 73 and 92. Yeah. Um, so that's the avenue we need to go down. That's the road to changing this. Things like this in our modern society, those on the left and those who are part of this moral decay and that propagate it, they have one advantage over many conservatives and pro-lifers is they have excellent social media game. Really? This is how the cool kids talk, Senator. <laughs> their, their social media game is up. So I want you to know that uh, we intend to help this next time with you uh, with a social media game that uh, will make sure the world knows about what you're doing and the church knows about what you're doing. And we have we have a collection of local churches, not just Christians, but local churches across the country that will fully support you and join in this with you. So as of right now, the next time you do this, you have 200 local churches across the country that will all also be in on that social media game and making sure that the world knows and that we give you all our support. Well, so you've got all, you, got, you, got, you have now a media machine behind you that'll help you. Fantastic, that's, that's great. Okay. And it, that does make a difference. It certainly does. We have to reach people and, uh, and open their eyes. So, oh, I appreciate that. I'll take all the help I can get. You got it. Everything we got. At times I felt like a one-man army. And uh, my name won't ever be in the history books, and, and, and that's fine. But uh, 
in my last hour I can turn to my kids and say, well, I was there and I tried. And that's all any of us can do, be there and try. Well, Senator, I actually hope that you're wrong on that. I hope that very soon your name's in the history books because we end abortion in I know that would be nice. I don't have to take credit for anything. I just want it to happen. Right. You know. But your name belongs there if we do it. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you so you. much. God bless it you. It was great being here. Thank you. Very important stuff, guys. We'll be right back after this when I encourage you guys, be prepared to offer support to Senator Dan Foreman when the time comes. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you. segment of the show, we wanted to talk about how the media spins things constantly. We've seen it, right? Even with our own show, people don't watch the entire segment. They just look for a second and then they take things out of context. And to show you just how easy this is, we decided to take part in an episode of Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Without any reference to what the show is actually about. We've never actually watched a show. We have no idea. <laughs> but we're sure there's a worldly view. Oh, I'm out, Doc. Oh, oh. I'm out, Doc. All right, baby, here we go. Now it's your turn. Come on, here we go. Donna, I'm trying, but I can't get it. I can't yes, sir, get it. I don't need to watch the whole show to know what they're trying to portray here, okay? The man has no problem escaping, but the woman is bound by the chains of the patriarchy. <laughs> That's what's happening. Why are you calling me? Because I need that evidence against the mayor today. I'm working on it. Work faster. Look, I, I just need a little more time, okay? Okay, that's obvious. That is clearly CNN trying to find evidence on Trump and Russia. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you remember the last time we had breakfast in bed? Okay, wait. Okay, guys, it's not what you think. These are just two brothers, small house, big family. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. It's super gay. That's, <laughs> that's the show, guys. That's the show. Want to encourage everybody who's viewing. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for watching this show and sharing it. Thank you to our live audience. Thank you to everybody, guys. In our first month, over one million views across social media for all of our content. It's an amazing thing. So thank you guys so very, very much for being a part of this ministry with us in this show. I uh, want to point you once again to endabortionnow.com. You can go there with your local church. You can get free training. You can get free resources and join the now 230 local churches across the United States who are bringing the gospel to their abortion mills, saving lives and ministering to mothers and fathers. So you can join with us in this movement. And once and for all, end abortion now. Go to endabortionnow.com, guys, to get set up and get connected. Thank you guys so much for watching next week. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to like and share the episode. Thank you.